All right, and welcome back to Astro Crash Course with Strappy. This is lesson number six. In the previous lesson, we have created our banner and we could hide it by clicking the X button. And we also see that we're able to get our data. So we are ready for the next step, which is to create our header component and our footer. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. And to help you along the way, I'm going to include this gist that has all the components that we're going to create and all the code. That way you don't have to type things from scratch. So definitely check out the description in the video. But today, looking at our code, we're going to go ahead and add our header and footer component. And as you could see here, we are already getting our data and able to display the JSON. So the getting data portion is done and we're ready to create the component. So now let's navigate to our components folder and create a new file. And we're going to call it header.astro. And as always, all Astro files start with a front matter. And inside here, we're going to import our header types, which we already created. Next, we're going to import our Strapi image component that we created in the previous section. And then now we're going to add our interface. And basically it expects our header data. And then I added class as a prop so we could go ahead and pass additional class styles to this component if you wanted to. And then we're going to destructure our data. And then within our data object, you see that we have ID, logo, nav items, and CTA. So we're going to go ahead and structure the logo, the nav items, and the CTA, because we're going to use them again. So I'm going to say const logo nav items and CTA, and that's going to come from our data just like that. And finally, I always like to do this additional null check. If something's up, we don't have the data. We're just not going to display anything, rather having our app crash. We could probably take this to structure and move it after the if statement because no point of the structuring if we don't have data. We're also going to get current path, which is available to us from astro.url.pathname. And this is coming from our Astro Global Props. And this is what we're going to use to check what page are we on to make sure that we could highlight the appropriate item in our menu. And finally, we're going to add our styles before moving to our body. And again, you could either get the styles from the script that I shared, or if you want, I'm going to kind of zoom out a little bit and you could pause the screen and type it out by hand. At this point, basically when you're learning to code and you're working with HTML and CSS, in our case, we're using Tailwind, the design of the project is more of taste of like how you want to style your app. So you could literally write the CSS yourself, but I don't feel we should spend a lot of time kind of going over CSS in detail, especially the fact that we have different tools that could help you create your CSS project. And it's something that you can continue to learn on your own. But the most important part here is that instead of adding all of my styles inside my HTML, I like to store everything inside my styles object, similar to if we did like CSS modules or something, that way it allows me to just use the variable names instead. And that way I get to keep my HTML much cleaner. And with that being said, let's go ahead and add our HTML uh, snippet. And I'm just going to copy it from my notes and then we could uh, talk about it. And this is why I provided the notes. So that way you don't have to type everything yourself. We will type out the JavaScript ourselves. I think that's more important than just HTML and CSS. And I wanted to provide this as a template for you. And basically here we are creating our header component. We try to use a semantic HTML tags. Since it's a header, we're going to use the header tag. Since we're going to have nav items, we're going to use our nav items. And we also going to have a mobile nav item and one thing to keep in mind here is that we are identifying it by this ID nav bar menu, which we're going to use in a little bit when we write our JavaScript. This header consists of our desktop nav that you see here. And basically 
for our logo, we're using our Strapi image component that we created and we pass our data that we have. Then our header has a button that's going to be a button for our burger menu. And again, the thing to keep in mind here is this ID with the burger button ID. We're going to use it in our JavaScript and that is our desktop nav here. And here we also have our unordered list, which is going to show all our nav items that are coming from our response in Strapi. So what we're doing is we're getting our data, our nav items, and we're mapping over it. And we are rendering a link for each item that we have. Our response also returns a call to action. And if you're wondering where is the CTA, where does the nav items come from? It comes from our response that we're passing into this Azure component. Our header props include the following data. It's a header with an ID, our logo, our nav items, our call to action, and that data is coming from our API that's coming from our API call here in our layout. Notice we're getting our data, and once we have our data, we're destructuring, and we're going to take our header data and pass it to our header component. And while we're here, let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll continue looking over our header component. So instead of returning this JSON string, we're just going to say header and it's going to take data because that's how we typed it. And that data is going to take in our header data. And then the last thing we have to do is to make sure that we import it here at the top. So after the banner, I'm going to go ahead and import the header from our components and it's our header component. And now that we have that, it's complaining because it's saying, Hey, that header data might be undefined. So what we have to do actually here is do the exactly same thing we did here before. We're just going to say, if header data is present, go ahead and return the header component and we could remove this extra div and let's do our closing bracket and again i like how our typescript complaint said hey our component requires that we pass data into it and so here we check if data for the header doesn't exist we just don't show the component and that would kind of would nullify the check that we have here and i guess we could have said t header could be uh data could be our t header or undefined right and then in that case here we could have got away by doing this because it wouldn't complain and if this would have happened right and we accidentally did not have the header data if it was undefined if we take a look this if statement would check hey if it's undefined or falsy return null so that would catch it so in reality the fact that we are saying hey data has to exist this null is almost like redundant, but I'm just going to keep it here anyway. And then now, because we did remove undefined, we have to do this check here. And if you have any questions on this, like definitely ask in the comments, but I just wanted to kind of talk through uh, the process. And now that we have the header, if we take a look at our website, you could see that we have our header, our logo, our home about blog and learn more. It's coming from our data in our Strapi application. If we navigate to our content manager and we take a look at the global, notice that we have our banner that we covered in the previous lesson. Then we have our header and for our header, we are getting our image from our Strapi application and notice how we have these navigation items. For instance, if I wanted to add a new navigation and I'm just going to say test, I'm going to call it test and click publish. If we take a look at our header and I restart my Astro project, you could see that we have the test in the menu. And so what's cool here is that we are able to get our data from our Strapi application and it's being rendered by our Astro uh, project. And so let's continue going over the header component just so we make a little bit more sense. So we know that we are already getting our data and we're passing the data to our header. And if we navigate to our header component, we're destructuring the data that we get in our props and we're able to use it inside our HTML. And notice 
when we get our logo image, we're using our Strapi image component to display it. If we take a look at our button, and this is going to be our mobile button, so let's avoid that for now. And then here we're getting our nav items. We're mapping through our app items and we're just returning list item of all of our anchor tags, which basically take the nav link items and displays them. And remember how we took a look at current path? This is what we got from our props. If you see here, we're saying, hey, if current path equals to the item that we're displaying in the navigation, use the active style. And if it's not matching the route that we're on, set it to inactive. That's why if we look at our UI, we're on the home route. And so we're matching home and that's why it's active here. If we go to about right now, we have not found because we don't have that page, but, but if we had the about page and we were on the about page, that path would match. So this would set this class to active and we'll see that later as we go along. Then we have our CTA, which is coming from Strapi and it's just an anchor link, anchor link to send us to whatever that CTA is. It could be to another website or another uh, page on our side. And then we have our mobile menu and we're following the similar pattern. We are showing our strappy image. We have our CTA button and we will have all of our nav items. And if you know basics of HTML and CSS, this should make a little bit more sense. If you're confused about anything in here, ask me in the comments. I'm here for you to answer any of your questions. And I do stream every Sunday, 11 a.m. CST time. Good time to stop by and bug me with questions. No question is dumb. I will be more than happy to help you with these answers. But just to keep this course uh, not super long, because it is a crash course, we're just focusing on the details. And so the last piece that I want to show you here, if we take a look at our top navigation and we switch to mobile view. So if I try to click this button, nothing will happen. And the reason being is because we did not add behavior to our button via JavaScript. So now let's go ahead and add our JavaScript back in our header.astro component right after our header HTML tags. Let's go ahead and add a script tag. And this is where we're going to write all of our JavaScript. And typically in JavaScript, if you want to add behavior to elements or update a class or add an add event listener, you need to select it first. And we're going to do it the easiest way possible. And if we take a look, we added IDs to different elements that we want to get. For instance, we have this mobile button and we're going to target based on its ID. So what we could do is target our burger button using document.getElementById, referencing the ID that we just found. We also set an ID for our navbar menu. And here our navbar menu is the parent for our mobile container. So let's go ahead and target. We could select this element and then update the styles on our navbar menu to either show or hide the menu. So let's go ahead and select it. Again, we're going to keep it simple using targeting the navbar based on the ID that we specified. We also have our navbar close button. So we have this button. This button is going to be responsible when we click it to close the navbar. So let's go ahead and target this button. So back here again, we're going to use document get element by ID and we're going to target our navbar close button based on the ID that we provided. And we also have a backdrop and we did the same thing. And what we want, we want to target the backdrop because when the menu is open, we want folks to be able to either click on the close button, the backdrop, or hit the escape button to close the menu. Now we could create functions to handle each one of these behaviors. So the first one is going to be handle menu open. And I like putting things into functions so that way they have specific functionality and we could just reuse them. And basically we're saying if there's a navbar menu, if that element exists, we're going to go ahead and remove the hidden class. And that's going to show the menu. Then we're going to create a function that's going to handle menu close. 
And again, it's gonna select the navbar menu and it's going to go ahead and add the hidden class. And above, as you could see, if the menu is hidden, it will remove the class where when it's closed, it's going to add the hidden class. So we're basically just updating the CSS by adding or removing the class. Next, we're going to create a function that's going to listen to a keyboard event. And what we're going to do, we're going to say, hey, if the event and the key is escape, let's call the handle menu close button. That's going to go ahead and add the hidden class, which will hide our menu. Now that we have all of our elements selected, we have all the functions that are responsible for their behavior. Let's go ahead and stitch everything together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have an if statement and we're basically going to check if all these elements exist. That means they're loaded into the DOM and we have selected them correctly. We're going to go ahead and add our event listeners. Since we already define the functions, all we need to do is add event listeners to each specific element and pass the appropriate function. So our burger button, we're going to add an onclick event and that's going to be responsible for opening the menu. On our close button, we are going to add event listener on click and that's going to be responsible for closing the menu. We also have our backdrop and we want to be able to click it. So we're going to add an event listener on click and that's going to close the menu. And notice by putting things into functions, we're able to reuse those functions in multiple places. And that's why I like to do things this way. And finally, we're going to listen to a key down event and our handle key press function will listen to all the different key presses. And if it equals to the escape key, it's going to call the handle menu close. And again, notice we are able to reuse these functions in multiple places. And this is all we have to do. So now let's go ahead and test our mobile nav bar. So back in our application, I'm just going to refresh. If I click here, notice that our menu button opens and I should be able to click escape. Yep, it closes it. I should be able to hit the close button. Yep, it closes it. And this backdrop, I should be able to click on it. It should close the menu and it closes the menu. One thing you're going to notice is that our home is not highlighted like it is on our main page. And that has something to do of using the current path and comparing what path we're on and updating our styles accordingly. Before the next video, see if you could find where in the code it is and how you can fix it. The big clue is probably in our mobile nav because this is not highlighted. So see if you could fix it. If not, don't worry. We'll cover this in the next video as well as build out our footer. With that being said, take a quick break. Thanks for joining as always, and I'll see you in a few minutes.